Hey everyone, Matt Saletti with DubSpot. I'm a course designer and director of our online school here, and I'm looking at some of the brand new products in Native Instruments Complete 10. Some great new synths in here. We're going to show you how they work and why you're going to want to use them. All right, so let's get back into it. In the first video, we showed you how to make an initial patch and showed you some of the major functionality and kind of the architecture of rounds. And now we're going to get a bit further into programming it and showing off some of the other essential functions. And the first place I want to start with is basically how the voice programmer works and some of these different modes that will trigger it. So first of all, you can see I'm in mono chord, which is basically monophonic. And I'm actually in a zone, a, a, like a voice zone. So you can see different parts of the keyboard are actually colored differently. So you can actually have your different synthesizer zones set up within one block. These could be completely different, you know, waveforms, synthesizers all together. You can blend them easily like that. Another way to do it is basically to put this thing in um, a layer. So as soon as I hit one key, it's going to trigger all the cells. So you can imagine it can get more complex if you start to change different wave types. Maybe we'll come in here and this guy will make a, with a square wave, with a sub. And then four we can get in and we can even, who knows, maybe we want white noise. And it's kind of nice, you can again mix between the different waveforms and even adjust the level. So if you're going to do something like white noise, you might want to break it down. And you can see you kind of stack it and you can create more interesting simple sounds out of one block even. So imagine doing that. You can also go ahead and put in unison mode, which is going to be different than the layer because it stacks it, detunes it, and spreads it out for you. You know, it, it sounds quite different. And again, rounds is a four voice synthesizer so it's stacking four at a time and it just sounds very thick so you could create like a huge oh I don't know like a sync lead all we're doing here is adjusting sawtooth waves put them in sync mode and then having an envelope trigger the tuning of oscillator 2 I can even go ahead and set my mod wheel on the K control S to whatever parameter I want. And it's kind of nice with the touch control because you can do things like this. Or you can even put this thing into like zero gravity space and have it adjusting and modulating on its own. Very powerful. Next, let's move on to kind of an analog pad because I want to show you the, the beauty of this uh, analog engine. And we're just basically doing a little bit of pulse width modulation. And I have this in multi mode now, so I can play chords. And if I don't know how to play, I can use the fantastic chord sets that are actually right in the KKS keyboard. So check this out. We'll go ahead and put in scale mode. I'll hit shift scale so I can actually edit it. And you can see as I move through, it's changing the root notes based on what scale I'm choosing. So let's choose D minor. Let's just actually put in some of these chord sets and check this out. Love 
lovely, thick, lush sound. All right, let's move on and talk about the morph capabilities of this thing, because we haven't showed that off yet. So you see this little kind of infinity looking sign here? Well, this will actually allow you to morph between the cells in different ways. So if I hold down one key, I've taken the same analog pad and basically just morphed it in a few different ways using three different synthesizers, right? Simply that first analog sound, the pad, and then adjusting some things like the cutoff and the wave types and the pitch, most importantly. So you're hearing these ramping and, you know, kind of morphing sounds. I also have it set to note, meaning this is going to trigger Every time I hit a note, it's going to trigger the next cell in line. And from here, we have two ways to control the morph. A global amount setting that is basically going to change the morph for any of these blocks that you've, you've set it on. And again, you just basically click on the morph or not. And then a block specific. So different blocks can react in different ways. And let me show you the different ways you can, you can play this back. So if I hold down one key, I have this, which is essentially a rate. And I can quantize that. And then you have a direction. Actually, the direction is here, actually. So let me, uh, let me take the, this off. You can see it. This is it bipolar knob. So if I go the other way we're playing back differently and then this knob over here is you hear how it's kind of stuttering between each cell is jumping instead of being smooth all over here so you have two different options to play like that you can also have it set to just do it once And this is just using one cell, everyone. I uh, mean, one block. Imagine if you start combining these in different ways and morphing through it. And again, you can do it block specific. So A can be moving counterclockwise, B can move the other way and jumping back and forth. It's, it's crazy. Lastly, you can do kind of these sequenced type of sequenced arpeggios almost. So again, I have it in note. Each note I'm going to hit is going to play something. This makes me want to go ride a BMX bike. Y'all know that movie, right? Anyway, so this is, uh, <laughs> this is Send Me an Angel, one of my favorite 80s songs. And to do this, just simply kind of programming each synth to have different pitches and running through very simple like that. So you can do a lot of fun things, you know, you can play it like that, but you can also experiment further. You know, for instance, if I use the keyboard now, and I can set the arpeggio. Real quickly, I want to show you the effects section. 
a simple delay and reverb. This is a brand new reverb algorithm, and it's basically a bunch of delays set up that you can spread uh, and you know use in different ways. So you can get this huge, beautiful wash of reverb, or you can just have this sharp, metallic-y kind of room resonance, however you like. It's, it's really dynamic. And the cool thing about the delay is it gives you this nice grain or uh, non-grain feature. The grain is kind of cool because you can do things where I'm adjusting the time and you're not hearing those crazy pitches between them. So, I can create some really interesting sounds like that. Now lastly, I want to show you one more preset. This is one of the factory presets. Let me take this thing out of arpeggio. And lastly, I want to show you the remote octave. And so you can see on the complete control S61 here, I have on one of the bottom octaves, everything is in purple. And this is really slick because you can actually trigger things via the sharp keys and the white keys. For instance, a specific cell. And the white keys will trigger the different blocks. So imagine you set up completely different sequences for different blocks and cells and I mean you can have a lot of fun with just playing with it like this. And this is a great example of using a hybrid of analog and digital. You know the FM, the digital kind is kind of doing more of the percussion although even the analog is doing some of that but also playing you know they're they're doing both percussion and and melodic materials. It's really really slick so and again of course plenty of macros to play with. fun so hopefully you get a better idea of what rounds is capable of by all means get through some of these presets now that you kind of understand the layout look at what some of the master sound designers have done and making incredible incredible uh, snapshots for this great synth